What's up nerds, back with another video. In this video, we're gonna give a recap of last night's debate because I have heard some pretty, uh, woof, opinions about the conversation uh, last night, or lack thereof, and I just thought I would go over a couple of, of the uh, prevailing opinions, right? So, you've got kind of the four big opinions. You've got the Kamala opinion, the Trump opinion, the independent opinion, and then the non-voters slash meme slash appendant, independent slash, well, uh, <laughs> independent from the process, I mean. You know, this could be foreigners, this could be people that don't vote, this could be wh whatever the case is. But those are, I think, the big, the big four. And so if you look at it from uh, either of the two sides' positions, both of them are gonna think they uh, win. And then if you look at it from the third party perspective, I think that you still kind of say that Trump wins even if you are a disliker of Trump. And that's only because, and this is, and this again, hopefully, I'm giving the independent person the benefit of the doubt that they are using their head and they're thinking and they're listening and they're watching and they have the ability to look up things afterwards. You know, they can do their own fact checking to an extent. I'm talking about that independent voter, not a Kamala Harris independent voter, because the independent voters that Kamala, Kamala Harris has are voters who just Donald Trump is bad. So it doesn't matter, they're not really independent, they're just waiting for Donald Trump's name to be said as an excuse and then they're gonna go vote for Kamala. It's like, no, independent voters hopefully use their fucking heads, right? So if you use your head as an independent voter and you're listening to the rhetoric on both sides, you'll see, just like all the articles say now, that all Kamala did was lie and instigate Trump. She did not talk about the actual country. Granted, we did not get much actual talk about the actual country uh, from Trump either, right? However, Trump was responding and would not bring up things, right? Like, it was, it was a policy talk. It was a talk about the country. I mean, well, ugh, gotta take that back. It was a talk about... I'll make a policy, and it was a talk about their lack of a policy, but there was no actual policy talk itself, which has been kind of the standard from Trump to very slightly segue. Trump has done a lot of interviews online, and I have seen a lot of those interviews, and that's what his response is to everything. When everybody asks him about policy, he says, I can tell you when I'm president, I'm not gonna tell you now. So for me, hearing him not talk about policy is kind of, I didn't really expect that, because every time he's had the chance to talk about policy the last fucking two months, he hasn't done it. So I didn't expect much from him in this time anyway, let alone, like, he, even he's been doing all these podcasts with the most favorable people ever and he doesn't give an answer so when he's in a 3v1 knee deep in enemy territory why is he gonna give the fucking answer then it just doesn't make any it didn't make sense to me so now to bring it back trump was at least talking about the country and things directly related to our country's future, things of importance right now, or things within the last three years, right? Kamala was like, oh, well, what about all these things from the past? What about all the times he did this? What about the times when he should have canceled this? Oh my, well, if you don't like, you know, acknowledge all of this, you're obviously a bad person. And that was the whole thing, just to get him to say that he's a bad person and to get him to defend himself personally. And then one of the worst takes that I've heard from this, right? And, and following up, I hope you're paying attention and watching this video. The worst take I heard is that someone said, Trump did good about not letting her get under his skin until she started talking about his rallies and then he seemed to change a little bit and it's like yeah i get it because he can handle it when you talk shit about him right no problem but once you start 
making lies about the American people, the people that you want to vote for you, the people that you want to, the people that you are pretending to, you know, all this like bullshit, you know, no shit that that is when he gets a little ticked off. And it makes sense. I mean, for me, that is the kind of response I want. And some of the people who have the opinion are like, that's a bad sign. It's like, you realize, or do you not realize that the, 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 the disrespect, you know, slap to the back, you know, backhand to the face that Kamala just, you know, gave you? And you're sitting here like a giddy little boy. It's like, hee 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 hee. And that made Trump mad. <laughs> when Kamala, you know, took a shit on my chest, you know, and Trump was like, oh, let me clean that off your chest, you know. I was like, no, I like it when it's stinky. Like, what kind of stupid, dumb bullshit? And I get it that, you know, I'm a weirdo. You know, like, I just want to suck, Trump, suck Trump's dick, you know? Like, I need to not be so, you know, fucking celebrity-like scoped or whatever. But, I mean, come the fuck on. Pay attention. You are the fucking vote, like... <sighs> so, now, I digress. That was the most worked up I wanted to get, because that, that opinion, holy shit. Wow. I mean, like, have some fucking self-respect for yourself. Like, recognize when they're talking about... I, I, I don't think some people recognize when they're being talked about in these conversations. And it's like, wait a second. She's talking about our money. Wait, wait a second. She's talking about our votes. She's talking about, you know, other people. You know, it's like, huh, maybe... Maybe I should, I should, I should, maybe I should try to use my head more, hopefully, like these independents hopefully are, you know, because like, fuck, at least Trump may be a lot of things, but the debate showed that he was on point fighting for the American people, bringing America back together. Kamala was all about personal attacks and using cancel culture, cancel culture, playing to people's egos, and then when it came to her, uh, you know, promoting herself and whatnot, Trump shut her down in the perfect way possible. She has had all of this time. She has had all of these years. She has been in office. Why have these things not happened? Why has she not done these things? Like, granted, Trump is going to be old, right? But, I mean, she does realize that if he doesn't win now, he can win, He can run again, right? And then what's the fucking answer going to be then? Oh, well, uh, we still have time. To, we're still going to do this stuff. Vote for the next person so they can do it. It's like, what do you mean? That was what you said when you beat Trump. It's like, how many times? Are, but, but nobody's going to realize. Now... The independent, other independent uh, thing that I would like to just kind of opinion, I'd like to touch on, is the, oh, well, this is the same back and forth. It was the same thing, red versus blue, liar versus liar, back and forth, who nothing new bullshit, right? I argue that while it seems like that on the purple, on the surface, if you really take the time, and I'm talking at least 20 hours, hell, it could be less, it could be 10 hours, but you have to spend double digit hours doing some sort of research. You cannot sit here as a true independent in this, you know, like, this is why I mean, I talk about Kamala Harris independence versus like real world independence, right? Real world independence. If you want to claim yourself as one of those, you have to spend double digit hours looking at really fact checking for yourself and seeing for yourself, looking with your own eyes, listening with your own ears, not just taking what these just fucking talking heads online say. Like, watch the clips with the former 
Virginia governor talks about aborting babies after they've been born. Because guess what? That's the best part about Twitter being owned by Elon Musk. That shit's all front page news now. Oh, all the lies that Trump had? Well, guess what? They're front page on Twitter now too. Why? Because people are, it's not, because it's not, they, they, the, the mainstream media wants you to pretend that independents are just these uh, people that, you know, once they hear how bad of a person Donald Trump is, they're immediately like, oh, well, because independent means that you're a good person. So if you're a good person, you're not going to vote for someone who's bad. But independents really are people who use their heads and people who use their heads and look at this, see that it's like, yes, it's back and forth lies, lies on top of lies. However, who are the people? Who's the person fighting on a hill of lies, going to die on a hill of lies? And who is the person willing to die for the American people? Do you not forget he was almost assassinated? assassinated that he literally would have died for the American people. He, at this point, only is saying that he will. You know, like, obviously we don't want him to, that to actually happen, but Jesus Christ, it almost did. But it's somehow still oh, just one side versus the other. Red versus blue, lies versus lies. I mean, really, use your fucking head, please. Please use your, use your head. It's like, for me, how can you not do the most basic amount of research into the message that Trump is spreading? You can say that Trump got triggered because Kamala Hassan Kamala had uh, talked about his trap, his Trump the rallies, right? You need to watch his, a rally video. You need to watch his DNC speech. You need to watch the hours that he talks with people without having allegedly microphone earrings in her ears, without having prompts and note cards and everything out in front of him. I mean, he had, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, pr uh, teleprompters, right? Like, uh, but we're not, I'm talking, you know, we do not have, there's no allegations or memes about Trump having, you know, uh, hearing aids that tell him what he's doing inside of his ears. You know, we don't have any memes about that. Meanwhile, we've got jokes. Kamala Harris is so weak that they've got jokes about her wearing you know, microphone earrings. But no, oh, I'm sure that's all just Russian troll accounts. Russian fake spam promoting that Kamala. I'm sure that's the response, right? Because God forbid you use your fucking head to just consider it a possibility after seeing how ragged and pale she was being you know so just the the stress of running for president let alone being president we saw we've seen all the pictures of what happens to people everyone jokes about obama being the best he go you know he went in a uh, young man came out like you know george clooney fine wine kind of thing you know we've seen the memes of that kamala's chin and neck looks almost as bad as Trump's and her skin like yeah I mean like we joke about Trump's orange skin but fuck Kamala get a fucking put some makeup on like Jesus Christ like they walk out a corpse but but no we're gonna sit here and pretend like Trump is the fucking old man and like all this shit I mean Jesus Christ it is fucking bad it's like really bad like but anyway that's it. I'm done. I I, I got to move on because this fucking shitty Tesla is like fucking in the left lane where there's 30 fucking cars ahead of him. And I that was what the beeping in the car was. These fucking shitty Tesla Kamala cuck drivers. No, I'm just kidding. That was 
that was rude. That was on the way out. That was that was rude. that was New Jersey drivers in Pennsylvania. What can you do? Anyway, smoke grass, eat as be as into each other as we'll see you in the next video. What's up, nerds? Back with another video. In this video, I'm going to do a little recap of the presidential debate, Kamala versus Trump last night, and cover a couple different opinions because I've uh, seen a few different things and. Uh, I think I pretty much get it. Sorry, I didn't want to uh, do a crazy burp into the mic. So, last night's uh, debate was obviously, in my opinion, a massive W for Donald Trump. However, unfortunately, uh, the vast majority of people are just super ignorant and haven't spent the bare minimum of time, which I would consider to be, you know, 20, 25 hours. Uh, that it would take to look into either fact-checking uh, or doing any uh, first-hand research themselves, uh, whether that's, you know, following the fact-checking stuff on Twitter, because now that it's owned by Elon Musk, there's actual fact-checking. Uh, just a very brief example, Kamala and the fact-checking debate people said that uh, there have been no uh, post birth abortions and Kamala and both the uh, presenters uh, hosts said that we're shutting down Trump. However, first thing in the morning on Twitter, what do you have from page of Twitter? Oh, here's the clip of the uh, former governor saying exactly what Trump said and meaning it. So you can believe the mainstream media people. You know, again, people are stupid. People are ignorant. I don't blame them. You know, I mean, if you have, uh, you know, you if you're led to believe Trump is this bad guy and you're led to believe and you believe all of the stuff that all these news media say and you don't look up anything for yourself and then you have these hosts which are told are impartial and you're told that this is a fair and biased thing except however they only fact check Donald Trump and don't fact check Kamala and then even when they're in the debate themselves and Kamala is standing right there You've got the debate people saying, Kamala Harris has said that, blah, 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 blah. It's like, why doesn't she say it? Why don't you ask the question? Why don't you let them debate? Why are you inserting this stuff into yourself? So I can see the people that say that Kamala Harris uh, won this debate, you know, and it's unfortunate because those people I, I do believe are exposing themselves as, as people that just don't, don't, don't really have, you know, an understanding of what's going on, unfortunately. You know, uh, it, it, if you preface your opinion with something different, you know, uh, yeah, uh, who won the debate? Well, it's tough to say who won the debate because there was a lot of unfairness on both sides. Uh, I think if you look at the, uh, you know, presentation of it and you looked and listened to the things that were going on, I think it's uh, pretty hard to say that Kamala Harris didn't win. Uh, but that is, again, because, you know, she was set up. It was her debate. I mean, this was, uh, you know, enemy walking into uh, foreign territory. I mean, there was no real way he was going to win. Uh, so, uh, yeah, obviously, I think she won. However, uh, you know, he presented some ideas that I think, uh, you know, and talked about a lot of stuff that, you know, I didn't expect him to talk about. And uh, I think, you know, I, I give him a little bit of credit for that. But instead of saying that or having some sort of thought, something, they just go, oh, W Kamala, you know. It's like, it's like, okay, you know, it's fine if you have that, you know, W Kamala opinion, right? Uh, however, it's, you know, you're exposing yourself a bit when it's just an opinion because you're being told this opinion and not an opinion that you've actually thought of. Uh, and so, for example, just a very quick before we go into the opinions, to just highlight some of the dishonesty in this debate, we have two different sized podiums in the uh, debate, right? And there's two angles. There's the TV angle and there's the, you know, uh, recording angle. Like, you know, there's the in-person angle and the, and the watching on TV, right? Because there's no people in the debate, right? And so we can see the podiums and we can see that there's a tall podium and a short podium. And it's like, oh, well, duh, Donald Trump is a taller guy and Kamala Harris is a shorter female, so uh, uh, duh, the Trump is going to take 
the, the Trump-sized one, and Kamala is going to take the fucking Kamala-sized one. The fucking duh. And instead, we have the coin flip uh, announcement, and then Trump uh, said, and it's like, yeah, Trump is going to take the uh, whatever, and then the, and on a- ABC, check the YouTube VOD, uh, ABC goes, and Kamala Harris has chosen to take the right podium. She's chosen to take the right podium. What do you mean? Like, and I'm not sitting here trying to be a hater. I'm just sitting here using my fucking brain. I mean, like, what uh, what do you expect? Oh, oh, Donald Trump is going to take the fucking midget-sized one? Like, is, is that the fucking... I mean, is this like... I mean, everybody knows politics is a joke. But, I mean, are, are we actually... Huh, is, I mean, are, is, is that the joke? I mean, that's really it. Like, and so don't get me wrong. Hey, I'm not trying to sit, you know, start off here pissing off Kamala Harris people off the bat. But let's be fucking real. How You're going to sit here and, and it's fine. If you're going to say, oh, that was a misspeak. That was a, that was a mistake that they spoke, you know, or something. Okay. Take that opinion. However, there are a lot of opinion, of people's opinion, unfortunately, that say I am just a weirdo hater and that's, you know, stupid. Or like, you know, when I, I really do think that right now, if you like agree with your heart and soul, that opinion, totally get free to turn this opinion off because I, I think you are unfortunately acting. You are not a total retard, but you are acting like probably one of the world's biggest retards. And I don't know if it's because you're 12 years old and you don't have a fully frontal, forefrontal frontal lobe yet. I don't know if it's because you're 23 years old and you think you're the shit, but you spent all your fucking life, in, or you're, I'm sorry, if you're 18, but you spent three years of your life locked in your house because of COVID, so you're actually still a fucking middle schooler, right? I don't know if you're someone who's literally been exposed to nothing except what they see on TV, what they read on Reddit, which people think are independent areas now. However, it's not. These anywhere on the internet, except for pretty much Twitter and specific blog posts and specific websites and like very specific channels are like extremely heavily biased liberally and you know these debate hosts expose that in their own discussions but people are so inundated by it that it's just normal to them it's just normal for Trump to get fact checked on everything because obviously he's Trump. He always needs to get fact checked. Kamala never needs to get fact checked. She just needs to explain more about why she's so good because all Trump says is lies. So obviously all we just need to do is just keep saying all it's, I mean, it's an incredible, it's an incredible system to see at work and it's an incredible you know, uh, watching people's opinions about it, it's like, you know, hey, I, like, I'm a weird dude, right? And, and I think I like, I, someone said this best to me, right? I'm a weird dude, but I'm not a weirdo, you know? Like, I'm weird, for sure, but I am not a weirdo. So when people try to ascribe me as one and to ascribe my thoughts as such, I vehemently disagree because... I know where I've fucked up in life. I know what I've done. And I know what I've done to fix that and be better about it. And thinking the way that I think right now would not result in the benefits that I've seen. It would not have resulted in fixing the problems I had. It would have only made them worse, right? Which is just, I guess, part of the core about this debate, which kind of, it's funny, this is a very weird segue, and then we're coming right back. It's the exact same thing that's happening with Dr. Disrespect right now. You can either accept that people make mistakes and then use them for fuel to become better in life, or you can reject people whenever they make 
one mistake and hold it over them for the rest of their lives and never allow them to do anything else or be part of anything or or they must be censored like all of these you know extremely negative things it's you know uh, uh very interesting how there are certain people that you know are just so negative that it is therefore you know morally okay and logically okay to break all rules because the other outcome is just so negative and so scary and it's really i mean it's incredible and so sorry i had to press a medication uh timer on my alarm uh, on my phone I'm so sorry for covering up covering the webcam for a second now to get into the actual debate now that we've done a little bit of context and a little bit of prefacing right so the debates have four major opinions it had Donald Trump's opinion Kamala's opinion their supporters opinions the independent and then the people outside told the non-voters other countries voters uh, online people that don't care like the the anarchy kind of opinion right so if you're watching the debate I think uh, you've got Trump people think Trump wins Kamala people thinks Kamala wins however it's interesting how they think they won and the independent vote which is what everyone is trying to get and how that independent you know opinion is sort of twisted as again you've got these sort of like Kamala Harris independence and like real world independence in my head you've got independence as people who are good people they just have neutral like not left or right opinions but they're good people that's what like a Kamala Harris independent is it's like okay they don't vote for uh you know whatever left or right taxation bills but they'll vote for environmental stuff so they still vote they're still good people but they just don't like pick a side right that's kind of the Kamala Harris Democrat and then there's the real life Democrat, or I'm sorry, real life independents. And then there's the real life independents who are, okay, I'm going to take the time that I need to take to look into this, to see if this is going to benefit me, to see if this is something that I agree with. And if it doesn't, let me see if it's still worth it because while I might not agree with it, it's still, you know, my, it, 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 it's just like yeah, love to hate it, agree to disagree, Wh whatever it is. Like you know, it's not for me, but I can see how it, my state it needs it, whatever, or states' rights, whatever. The Kamala Harris and the mainstream media, like, really pretends like the independent, the critical thinking independent doesn't exist. It pretends like independence once you show them explain to them how bad of a person Donald Trump is and you trigger him and you get him angry then he is you know it's it's incredible what's up nerds back with another video in this video we're going to talk about last night's debate and kind of like a hypothesis I've got for kind of like the state of the country and, you know, the state of a lot of people's minds right now. So recently we've had a lot of TDS going around, traumatic tr Donald Trump syndrome or something along those lines. I always called it the Donald syndrome because the Donald was uh, Donald Trump's Reddit. So, and it took over the internet and forced the internet to change all of its censorship rules. Like, it was the beginning of, like, this huge censorship, like, online complex was started because 
Trump Reddit memes were so insane that they had to redo all the Reddit rules and began auto modding and fucking all this like degeneracy all over the place. I mean, like Reddit mods, that was never a thing until after the Donald was taking up the top three spots of the Reddit front page because people were s such fucking, fucking dank memers online. And then now you've got these like 20 fucking sweaty kids in a house that mod for 400 subs each that are on these insane power trips and are paid off by all these fucking, like, I mean, go down some of these fucking rabbit holes, people. I mean, like, it's, it's sickening. And it used to be that instead of just all of that, we just had a bunch of people sharing their opinions. And, oh, if you didn't like the opinion, you downvoted it. And enough people who agreed with you. Oh, 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 but, but no, oh. But the only reason stuff must get to the front page on the internet is because of modding. Obviously, the only reason this stuff. That's why we need the. That's why we needed to implement all this because, well, it couldn't have been that these were all real, true people with actual opinions and voices. Like, and so we've got the internet as I knew it, where people actually existed, and now we're approaching dead internet theory, where we've got YouTube Shorts, all these TikTok shit was all just like. AI, you've got videos on YouTube talking about how to become a millionaire making AI TikTok videos. I mean, like, what, what, what was the point of YouTube again? Would YouTube still make AI TikTok brain-dead content? I, th I thought it was to post cool shit to share with your friends, to express yourself, and, you know, no, that's, no. Obviously not. That's fucking weird. You're a fucking weirdo. Why would anybody want to do that? What's up, nerds? Back with another video. In this video, we're going to talk about a couple different intellectual things, as well as a debate last night and different opinions and different, uh, you know, stuff as, as well around politics and the future of uh, America and whatnot, because I have super long drive ahead of me so why not right and now we've got two things with the debate i've got this kind of censorship as well as psychosis combination you know with the new with the new internet right and then that whole theory and then compare and contrast that to last night's debates and people's opinions on the debates because essentially my argument is that Donald Trump was the perfect catalyst for the deep state and the people that be and the powers that be that want control over your life that want control over your freedom I believe that he was the perfect excuse for them to say hey I'm gonna fucking, like, we had, we needed something to implement, like, plan takeover. Well, hey, we got the perfect excuse for plan takeover right here. And you saw it all over the place. You saw it on the internet. You saw it in real life. I mean, people, cancel culture, holding people accountable. Okay, right? I get that canceling people and making it so they can never do things ever again because you de disagree with them is different. You know, if people accept that they've made mistakes, own up to that, and then use that to become better, that is not a bad thing. That is a good thing. We should not be censoring people because they have mad mis made mistakes if they have shown that they are capable of change. And they're capable of becoming better because of it. If they're capable because of helping others. Like, like, just for example, if someone was a bully to someone in high school, right? And they felt bad about it. They decided, I'm never going to bully again. And they used that as fuel 
to create some anti-bullying help, some anti-bullying uh, messaging that ended up saving or changing thousands or changing millions of lives because of it. We should not, period, cancel that person and make them a bad person and tear down everything that they have because that one bully, when they were 17 years old, comes out on Twitter or on Facebook and says, hey, that person bullied me. I've got the videos of it. Yes, obviously it's bad. Yes, obviously it's mean. Yes, obviously we never want it to happen again. However, that does not outweigh the millions of people. And now this argument does have limits. You know, it's not, not everything is, not every juice is worth the squeeze. Not everything is, uh, not every means is worth, or every end is worth the means, right? However, in the situation of learning and becoming a better person, to be a better person to other people so that we can all be better as people together, that is not one of those lines. And if you think it's one of those lines, you are wrong. You are immature. You do not know, understand enough about this world. And if you're someone who thinks that I am weird for having this opinion, if you think I'm someone weird for taking opinions like this, for, for, for having, you know, a stance on things like this, then you are projecting because you need to stand for things in your life. You need to have things that you stand for. And if you don't, you are the weird one. Do not project it onto me. It is difficult to stand for things. It is scary to stand for things. I do not know what in the future is going to happen that I'm going to have to fucking encounter. Just like Donald Trump, just like Dr. Disrespect, just like in my own life, who knows what's going to happen and who knows what I'm going to have to admit, what demons I'm going to conflict, what I'm going to have to hold myself accountable for. But I have made the decision to hold myself accountable. Okay? That is something that I do not think many people really understand. Instead, they pretend that being a fence writer and being intellectually, like, you know, uh, in the middle ground, being like this uh, independent person is, uh, is what makes them, you know, it just makes them a good person. No. Standing your ground for things makes you a good person. Standing for nothing means nothing. Okay? Now, this mass psychosis, next, moving on, mass psychosis. I believe that the way the internet has been changed, the way that mainstream media talks about stuff, the way that uh, reporting is, or the way that Reddit has become, all of these various components, uh, TikTok, apps, marketing, all of these things, right? I believe that they are all part of a larger, just turn off your brain, listen to us psychosis, right? And it's resulted in people not think, they think they're critically thinking. They think that they are, uh, you know, these independents, these fence riders, these moral superiorities, because that's what they've been become inundated with over the last 15 years, you know, 2009, 2010 onwards, since the internet was brought into your hands, since, you know, really that, that world was identified as like, oh shit, like, you know, like we could really have something here, you know, because you've got people now that don't even bother doing their own research because they hear enough other people or they think that, you know, it's, it, it's just the, the psychosis is that there's no reason to listen to anyone else except 
Let's see if I can sneak in here. Yes. Thank you. Sorry, this fucking truck driver who, like, needs to get over to the fucking... You're in the fucking wrong lane, buddy! There's literally no trucks in the left lane, and we've got this fucking 18-wheeler in the left lane. Jesus Christ. But, anyway. Moving on. The psychosis, mass psychosis, is that you can just trust us. You can believe everything we've said. psychosis that people have now been placed under is one of a thousand is cuts a death by a thousand cuts it's uh you know whatever the million nails you know you can if you get hit with one nail it'll stab you if you get hit with a million nails the surface tension will make it so it's more like a punch and not like a giant massive stab right same force being applied i mean i should say just like spreading spreading yourself out on ice if you stand up on ice you'll sink right through but if you spread yourself out all over you'll be able to stay for however long you know who knows how long Mass psychosis. Okay. So the mass psychosis that I'm talking about is very similar to the death by a thousand paper cuts, a million paper cuts. It's very similar to the sitting on a nail versus sitting on a bed of nails. It's the exact same analogy that gets used when people talk about Donald Trump and his lies and becoming insensitive to them because, oh, you used to be a good person, you used to care, but you've just heard so many of Donald Trump's lies that it's killed whatever the good person is you. Now you're an other. Now, you know, you've lost that part because you're just like numb to it or some shit right it's the same same thing except it's been the mainstream media the internet and corporations have all worked together to convince people that if enough things get said from enough sources then you do not need to do any thinking you do not need to question anything or, or look into anything, use your brain, just take whatever comes to you at face value. There's very little actual critical thinking, despite these people claiming themselves to be critical thinkers. Uh, there's very little, you know, uh, there's just very little logic being used. And if you do use real logic, you're a weirdo. I mean, that's literally what the Kamala Harris fucking campaign themselves campaigned with was literally like Donald Trump's weird. Aren't all of his supporters weird? Aren't they all weird? Like that was literally what they were using in the last, what, last three weeks, maybe tops as of recording right now, September 11th. I mean, it's and on top of that, we had Hollywood people making it a thing where you had what's her face uh, from the Snow White, you know, making that infamous uh, meme, weird, weird, weird. You know, like that's 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 them dismissing you as a person, 
And yes, I had someone said something to me that I really liked that fits perfectly in this. I may be weird, but I'm not a weirdo. And I don't appreciate when I'm personally insulted based on nothing other than, you know, things that just that just make that just make sense. You know, the questions that just should be asked. I mean, like if someone lies to you directly to your face, are you not going to just question the lie a little bit? Are you are you just gonna go along with it like, you know, hey, yeah. Like what is this Pennsylvania driver doing? I can't. Uh, it's, I would like to focus on driving so badly, but this guy in front of me with a fucked up bumper who can't drive is surprisingly not driving well. All right, but I did get the psychosis part down. That's really what I think it is. It's just that people just don't question anything. They think they're using critical thinking, but it's just overwhelming noise so that that drowns out their ability to critical think. It's, it's incredible. What's up, nerds? Back with another video. This time we're going to be talking about the debate and a couple different things that uh, I think are being exposed by this political election and different ideas that uh, different people are having across various platforms. So first off, I wanted to start by talking about the mass psychosis and delusion that people have and the skewing of what people consider to be independent and critical thinking because it seems just like how everybody's autistic now, everybody's on the spectrum. It feels like every, you know, the new hot thing is to be, oh, I'm a critical thinker. Ooh, I'm an intellectual. Ooh, I'm a fence rider thing, which is part of growing up. It's part of, you know, your brain developing part of your brain developing as you age is different ideas and different things you start thinking about them differently whoa but before you can actually get to that part as an adult you need to you know go through that process first like completely um and it seems like the way social media has rewritten people's brains is almost like a drowning out of true critical thinking and it, 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 it's kind of like they set it up to have this critical thinking alarm go off. And then what they started to do is every time the alarm went off, they would introduce their new sound. And every time they'd add a sound, add a sound. So every time you're critically thinking, you're critically thinking, yes, but then there's this noise in the back that gets louder and louder. And eventually you think that every time you hear that noise, you're hearing, you're, you must be critically thinking because you're conditioned now to think that, you know, every time you hear this uh, noise that you're critically thinking, but you're not. And so where that goes is I see that in the way that people talk about Donald Trump and Dr. Disrespect. It's the same TDS. It's the same mass delusion. And with both sides, it eventually, it, it essentially boils down to a moral, uh, you know, like threatening kind of. It's like, oh, well, you're a good person. And if you you know, think these other ways, you're going to be a bad person, and I know you're not a bad person, so you should, you know, just say, you know, go along with what we're saying, and, and it's funny because that, uh, like, psychosis, that delusion doesn't only, it doesn't stop at politics, and because a lot of people consider themselves not like a political person, but they still think exactly the way that the mainstream media and the politicians want them to think. So, for example, you've got Charlie Moist Critical, right? Who has gotten a lot of pushback this year for various poor takes and bad opinions. And he was traditionally someone where he would have goaded takes. The meme with Moist Critical, the meme with Charlie, was that he just go, Oonga Boonga, guys, it's me, Charlie. I'm the voice, cock, penis, 
here's a Twitch clip, and uh, thank you for the money, buy my merch. You know, like, that was the whole meme, and he just get fucking millions of views on his fucking videos for saying a two-minute intro with, oh, poopy, pee-pee, uh, look at the cocky poopy, here we go, stinky-winky. Like, and now he's gotten pushback more on his most recent, like, last, like, few months of videos, more than he's ever gotten pushback ever. Uh, or at least, like, vocal pushback from people that aren't just, like, the brain-dead, stinky, poopy monkey crowd anymore. And so he uh, made a few videos ab about uh, thinking critically when it comes to Ava Tyson, uh, when it comes to Mr. Beast, when it comes to Donald Trump, when it comes to uh, movies. Like these, he, he comes off as like this uh, intellectual type of individual, right? However, at the end of the day, he doesn't actually critically think about things. He just goes as far as the door. Like, he goes to the door of critical thinking, like, opens up and he's like, Hey guys, look who's at the party! But he never actually goes into the room. He never actually opens the door and goes inside. He just cracks it open, shows his face like, Hey, it's me! But he doesn't actually involve himself in, in that, uh, in that. And... That, that's 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 exactly what it's like with like mainstream media and all this stuff like with Donald Trump as exactly what it was with the debate and it's incredible because it's turning people who pretend to be you know independent thinkers who consider themselves as these critical thinker people these independents or whatever but they don't actually look at what's in front of their fucking face like specifically I'm not calling him out in a bad way I'm gonna like tag him or whatever but there's this guy Matt Kors who's uh, like a financial YouTuber right and he considers himself like aggressively independent and a critical thinker and all this whatnot but at the same time he doesn't look at things that are blatantly in front of his face and go huh that's a little weird you know and if he is this critical thinking person this independent person that he claims to be you know why not take the 60 fucking seconds it would take to do that but instead he's you know lived in this world of of false critical thinking to the point where uh it's you know it's become he thinks what it is but it's not and so specifically i'll give a, a, a specific example i mean there's multiple I'll, I'll talk about but just for the most basic level of simple understanding in the beginning of the debate there are two separate podiums, right? You have one podium, which is blatantly taller than the other, and most people uh, would think that Trump, who is six foot something, Kamala Harris, who's five foot something, you would think that, oh, this is because the tall one is for Trump, and the shorter one is for the shorter female Kamala. And that's not the case. You can go rewatch the VOD ABC on YouTube. No, no, no. It is not that they have the custom sized things. No, no, no. It is that Kamala chose the right podium to stand at. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? How? I, I mean, like, we're not even the, the two people haven't even started talking yet. And they're pretending like the podium, which is blatantly smaller, was not built smaller for Kamala? Like, you're fucking telling me that there is a universe where Trump chose the comically smaller podium? Or, like, had Kamala, like, like you know, like, guys, before we start, can we please get Kamala a booster seat so she can get behind the podium? Like, it, you know, it's just like, holy shit. So you've got these people who are independents and they're pretending like this shit, they, like there weren't, uh, you know, things to identify that may have, uh, you know, uh, highlighted the bias in this debate or the dishonesty in this debate. They pretend like it's uh, a, a fair uh, debate, which I, I, which I don't think uh, many people are arguing the super uh, fair part on the Trump side. It's more of the Kamala people. 
Like, I mean, everybody is saying, like, oh, who's biased towards Trump or whatever? It, it was or against Trump. And then the Kamal people are saying, like, oh, well, that's just, you know, the people are fact-checking, the people are whatever. It's like this was before any fact-checking. This was before either candidate started talking. And it is already... Like, how can you look at that and say, like, oh, well, uh, they misspoke. That's, uh, that's uh, a mistake. Really? That's the fucking argument? Because if that's the argument, then how come when Trump misspoke and said weaponization instead of lawfare, no one corrected him? No one said, like, oh, uh, oh, I think, uh, you know, it just... So, now, moving on. The... Continuing along the independent kind of false, independent kind of fake critical thinking, uh, like dog whistling, if that's the proper term uh, that they're uh, using. Another example is this idea of independent voters and them voting for Kamala Harris and getting these independent voters. Because again, as we've just building on what we've just said, independent voters, you know, they're not really the the, the actual independence, these critical thinking, you know, people that they're not actually really critically thinking. They're 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 being manipulated into thinking that they are, but it's just in reality, it's just playing to their egos or playing to their narcissism. You know, this group think is so strong that you know, no no one wants to go against it. I don't blame them. Because what happens when you do, you just get made fun of, you get depersonized, you get, you know, censored, you get all sorts of stuff. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's much easier to go with the flow. But if life was easy, it wouldn't be worth living, you know, unfortunately. Anyway, bringing it back on track. These fake independents, it's... When Kamala talks about them and when the mainstream media talks about them, they talk about independence as if they are 100% voting for Kamala, Kamala, if anyone just tells them how bad Trump is. Because at the end of the day, the only reason the independent voters aren't voting for Kamala is because no one's just talked about them, talked to them about Trump yet. Like once someone talks to them about Trump and explains how bad of a person he is because independent voters are good people obviously they're going to vote for uh, Kamala instead of Trump when in reality true independent thinkers need to do their own research right they it, it's a prerequisite to consider yourself an independent thinker to consider yourself a critical thinker you must do your own research and if you do not then you are not an independent, critically thinking person. You are just pretending you are. Like Matt Kors, again, I had this, uh, you know, a uh, shout out earlier in the video, right? Coming back to it just because he's a good example. You know, he uh, does, has a morning show where he talks about various things. He talked about the uh, Trump-Kamala debate, right? And he talked about how Kamala uh, won the debate just as a period. That's just how it is, right? And that's just not the case. That's your opinion. That's the opinion of many mainstream media. That's the opinion of many people who want Kamala to win the election, right? But if you look at it in a, in a realistic sense, again, going back to the critically thinking, going back to how he pretends to be a critical thinker, right? How can you not prequisite that or, or I'm sorry, preface that or you know, mention in that how blatantly loaded it was. And he kind of tries to cover himself up after the fact, right? But you don't cover your... It, it's, it's not really... I, I don't think that's the best way to go about it. I think if you are going to have just such a blatantly... You know, if you're going to have such a an opinion that you are going to present as fact... You need to provide more evidence other than just the statement of fact. So if you were going to say, you know, Kamala won the uh, debate, you know, I would say that 
maybe instead of just saying that as fact, like I know everything, like I'm the smartest person on the planet, like I'm the most critically thinking, independent uh, person on the planet that everyone else should, uh, you know, attempt to be like me because he says if you are, pick a side and you're too, like he would consider me a weirdo or stupid or a fool, right? Because obviously I sound like one, right? Duh. But so he will say these things despite, like I have said, we saw from before the people even, before Trump and Kamala even started talking, we could see the bias and the rigging of the debate. So if you're going to say she won the debate just carte blanche, period, that's, that's a lie. That's a lie. Maybe she won a biased debate. She won a rigged debate where we could see since the second, since you could see before the debate started that they wanted Kamala to win, obviously she was going to win the debate. I mean, like, if that's the case, then yes, that's fine. But you can't say like, oh, she won the debate, period, because that implies, oh, it was a fair debate. They, uh, you know, it there wasn't interference. It, like, it was all these other things. But now he has to go back and change every little thing and be like, oh, well, uh, yeah, I mean, she won the debate, but I mean, if you believe these other things, then I guess you could say she didn't win, I guess. Like, as, you know, making it seem like what he said is just the end-all, be-all, do-all, say-all, right? And I just really want to, you know, really cement in that I do not believe that, you know, if you uh, really, if we really got down to the super technicality of everything, you know, I'll, I don't think that's a waste of time, especially in this situation. At that point, you need to work, take a couple steps back and work more in a more general sense to find the foundations because otherwise everyone's just playing little nitty gritty word games. And that word game is in the larger sense of a, another game, which really doesn't, you know, we've got to, you got to zoom out. You got to pick your battles, right? And that's why the, the last thing, I know I've been kind of a little rambly in between, but the last thing, these, you know, again, these quote unquote independents, right? You gotta, you just, you really, you gotta stop looking at just the, the, the front covers and thinking that it's the critical thinking. You, you've got to stop. Like, I had, uh, I watched a video with Nicole Shanahan, uh, Trump's former VP, and she's like the independent critical thinker. I mean, she was like the independent candidate VP, right? And she said that, oh, and if you're an independent voter, you saw this and you didn't see any difference and all you just saw was the same thing. And it's like, no, no. If you were a true independent, you would not. You would not. Because you would see or hear the debate people loading their questions with Kamala's opinions when she's standing right there saying her opinions for her. And you think to yourself, okay, I might not be a Trump person, but maybe I can see how that's fucking loaded against Trump. Maybe you see things where it's like, huh, interesting how they fact check Trump and are very specific and nuanced about their tiny little word choices when they fact check. But then when it comes to whatever Kamala says, they're just like, oh, yep, okay, moving on. And they're talking about, you know, uh, introducing whatever next softball question. Like, true independent people do not look at that and think that that is how it's supposed to be. They don't. Like, if, the, if it was other politicians and different situations, maybe. However, this situation, when you look at what was happening and you use your ears, Kamala Harris did nothing but bring up ca cancel culture points or points that Joe Biden would have brought up or used, right? And then put we instead of I. They literally just copy-pasted Biden's speeches and put we instead of I because it's no longer Biden, it's Kamala. And then you've got her saying, 
uh, Donald Trump, uh, you're running against me, not Joe Biden. Meanwhile, the whole argument is that Kamala is just a fucking figurehead, just like Biden was a figurehead. No, who the fuck is the president right now? Which is Trump's whole message. Like, if you are truly an independent thinker and you do not see these things, then you are not using your head. I'm not even a tr crazy Trump guy. Like, I am, you know, obviously voting for Trump, duh. But if you are an independent and you don't see these things, you're not an independent. You're not looking. Just say it like it is. You're just not involved in politics. You're someone who wishes they could be, right? But until you do that work, you can't say that you're an independent because you're not. You're just looking at the headlines. You're just opening the door, peeking in. So I just, this was kind of like a rant on, you know, independence, quote unquote, and critical thinkers, quote unquote, you know, because fuck, everyone says I'm retarded, but then I look at all these opinions, I hear all these opinions, and it's like, man, all these people say that they're listening, they say that they're watching, and yet the opinions they have and the words they have, it's like, it, it doesn't make any sense. How can you have these opinions if you actually did listen, if you actually did pay attention? And it's like, do they think that these uh, points I'm making are not strong enough to get people like hooked or to get people voting. So they need to play the, the independents have to play the same political bullshit game. And it's like, isn't the whole point to be the, the third party so you're not? Like, it just seems like you're just as bad as the other two. So why would we even want you as a third? Like, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it, it's helpful, really. Anyway. Smoke grass, eat ass, be excellent to each other, and as always, I will see you in the next video. What's up, nerds? Back with another video. In this video, it is a follow-up on the independent discussion we had before, and it's interesting uh, because I had this whole concept of independence versus, like, mainstream media or like Kamala independence and the whole concept of that was that those independents that are promoted by the mainstream media or promoted by Kamala are inherently good people that just need to be reminded of how bad of a person Trump is and then therefore they will vote Kamala because that is essentially the their playbook right now is that it's good people versus bad people. You're either on the side of the good person or you're voting for this person with 34 felonies, convicted felon, impeached person, blah, 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 this whole rap sheet instead of any actual, you know, a anything actually substance, you know, any, no actual substance, you know, whereas Trump is got points to talk about actual, you know, whether it's the immigration, whether it's the economy, but it all comes together where he can say, she's been in office for all of this time. Why hasn't she done anything? I will be able to go in and do stuff. And so now fast. And, and my argument was that true independence are people that must take some sort of amount of time to research and then they make their decision. It's not like based on you know, whether or not someone's a good person or a bad person, or at least that's really how I think a lot of independents, you know, are or should be. And now, fast forward three, four days, right? We have this affidavit coming out with multiple different self-verification and redundancies and all of this uh, crazy stuff that, uh, crazy hoops that, you, that this person has jumped just so that they can verify the authenticity and just so that this is like, you know, a no bullshit. Like the person who did this affidavit, it wasn't like they just posted this shit on Twitter. I mean, they sent multiple packages to themselves, to various members of Congress, to various members of Senate, the all of the forms that they did, all notarized, dated, everything 
all of this again done under the perjury of law so that if anything is illegally said, they are willing to go to jail for the rest of their lives. And they've done this for multiple, all of these different packages sent everywhere. So essentially this person is, you know, willing to essentially throw their life away because they can end up in prison if it's bullshit, right? To, you know, die, they, they're dying on the hill that is, no, fuck this shit. Everyone's going to say that Trump swung the election if he won. Everyone's going to say that Trump did something to cheat. And, um, and if Kamala wins, Trump is going to say she fucking cheated because obviously that's... I mean, they were barely stood a chance with Biden, and now they're pretending like Kamala, who's the worst fucking vice president ever, is somehow going to beat Trump when before the fucking polls were saying that Biden could barely do it. I mean, fucking, I get that mainstream media has everyone's attention spans super short, but let's be fucking real. I mean, this is not even six fucking months old. This is not even three fucking months old. I mean, are people going to sit here and have this argument when you could just bring up this laundry list of hypocrisy? And so this person, you know, said, no, fuck this. I'm going to jail. I'm not going to let them cheat. I'm going to prove that at least in this situation and who knows how what she could do to cheat in the future, but I'm going to prove that as far back as at least the presidential debates, they are willing to cheat and manipulate and stack the deck against Donald Trump. And a few of the things that this person had mentioned was it's hilarious because it's exactly things that I had talked about in the previous videos, which I mean, maybe they might come out because essentially what I'm doing is I'm recording all of these videos, putting them all together, upload it as one big video, transcribing that all, and then having it go through AI to make the overall script and to verify the facts and to, you know, do the, you know, fact checking of myself and everything like that. So, I mean, you could just see in the videos themselves, for example, I talk about the different size podiums and how bullshit it was that... Uh, the moderators are saying like, oh, when President Kamala has chosen to take this podium, it's like, do they think we can't use our fucking eyes? I mean, look at the fucking podium size. I mean, it's so dishonest. And now we have literally in the affidavit of this person who, again, sent this all out before the actual debate happened. All this shit, he sent this out before the debate happened, calling out that this shit was going to happen. And he calls out the different size podiums. I mean, holy shit. I mean, we all knew that this was fucking rigged. And everybody, the rhetoric from everybody was like, oh, well, obviously the Donald Trump supporters say it's rigged, but none of the independents think that. None of the other people say that. It's like, are you kidding? Anybody with a fucking brain should be able to see this. Like, this is, I mean, if you do not think that this is rigged, you are willing to admit, like, replay that clip and then look anybody else in the eye and say like oh we, we talked to like if you're doing that you're just your entire i'm sorry but you should be dismissed you should you, it is valid in that situation to be dismissed or uh, dismissal of that person because they are there are facts multiple verified facts that like i mean and this guy is even proving it before it happened and the live clips and everything like if you look at all of that and you say that there's no BS, no stinky involved whatsoever. You are, in fact, just, you've got TDS. You've got TDS. You're just delusional. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry if that's, you know, if that's a hard, 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 you know, uh, you know, you can't handle the truth. It sucks. You know, like the truth hurts and you can't handle it. And it's just so incredible how I point out this stuff. We see like, you know, they don't talk about anything revolving Kamala's Kamala's past. Everything is just personal attacks designed to inspire lies, designed to, you know, manipulate and then the mainstream media goes with this uh, you know, narrative. It's like, oh well Trump is angry. Trump got all worked up. Trump blah blah blah. Look at this. You wouldn't want someone so mean. Oh Kamala, she got to him. Ha <laughs> ha. And it's like you realize that that she's 
you know, talking shit about the American people and using the American people as a manipulation tactic. And that is what you are cheering for and being like, yeah, let's go queen. Like, you know, talk shit about everybody more. Yeah. Like, and then just the last uh, icing on the cake. This is separate from all of this discussion that we've had, separate from all of this, right? The person who attempted an assassination at Trump, which is already being swept under the rug, which is already being dismissed, already, you know, just like they dismissed the first attempt uh, and all the subsequent information that's coming out, none of it gets talked about. Just like now we've got this uh, new one, which is already being dismissed. Oh, well, it wasn't like the first one. It wasn't so, uh, you know, it wasn't as bad. He didn't get shot in the ear directly. He didn't like take it. He wasn't like physically shot because that's what, you know, the bar is getting physically fought. Like he has to literally have a, take a physical bullet to his body before then it's, you know, serious enough to talk about on, on the news. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ, what a, what a fucking shit show. I hope people look back at this and really, uh, you know, remember and think and re really, because Jesus Christ is fucking, it's incredible. It is absolutely incredible. All right. Smoke, grass, eat ass, be excellent to each other. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Deuces.